After days of waiting, the nation has a new president elect this morning. Votes are still being counted, but Joe Biden has been declared the winner. The question, will President Trump concede? Former Congressman Mike Capuano was live in studio. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR. Good Sunday morning to you. I'm Ed Harding, along with News Center 5's political reporter, Janet Wu. We are live in Studio C this morning to talk about the election, an election like no other. And we will do so while respecting all social distancing protocols. You can see we're equally and evenly and distantly spaced apart. We are fortunate to have former Congressman Mike Capuano with us this morning to try to make sense of it all. It's great to see you. Do you call him former congressman or do you call you Mike? What do you want, what do you want me to call Come you? On, it's been Mike for <laughs> 30 years. Good point by you. <laughs> great to see you, Mike. Thanks for coming in. Regardless, thank you for being here, especially on such a gorgeous <laughs> Sunday. Um, so Joe Biden has won. President Trump won't agree. So between recounts and court hearings, how do you think this is going to play out over the next 10 it's, weeks? It's actually probably going to get overwhelmingly boring. Uh, this thing is done. Um, and it's, you know, they're going to have to go through a few hoops, I guess, to nail the last nail in the coffin. But it's done. And everything between now and, and January 20th is simply theater. But there could be a lot of screaming and shouting, no? Um, yeah, but, you know, that's normal in an election, and especially the last several elections we've had. People love to challenge things. Uh, the, the election process gets close. We do have an evenly divided country that makes things even more interesting. Uh, but things, this is not going to change. Joe Biden is going to be the next president. Um, and I think most of the country has accepted that uh, very willingly. Well, that leads me to my next question. Should progressives expect to be disappointed now that Biden has promised to govern for everyone, including Trump voters? I, I, look, once you win an election, the very next moment, people who helped support you then demand uh, whatever it is they want. And it's not just progressives. It will be everybody around the country. That's normal. It doesn't matter what office it is. Uh, so in this case, again, it is always it is a constant battle within government to determine who is the, you know, the alpha dog of, mm -hmm. of groups. Mm -hmm. And it usually shifts. It's, you know, you're a little liberal on this, you're a little conservative on that, whatever it might be. So will some progressives be disappointed? Maybe. Some moderates will be disappointed maybe um, that's to be expected so let's just talk about just sheer numbers you have what 75 million people voting for Joe Biden which is the most ever you have 70 million people voting for Donald Trump I mean we're flirting with 147 148 million in all and 70 million people that voted for someone who didn't win those numbers are are it's impressive that people turned out. I'll go that far. It, it, and it's been like that for the last many elections. It's been a long time since we had a very clear and definitive uh, divide in the country. Uh, and again, we have a re at the moment, we have a Republican Senate. We're going to have some interesting elections in January 5th of all time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it, it, the, no matter how you measure it, no matter who wins even those elections, it is unequivocally clear that the country is deeply divided. Uh, and I actually think it's, it's going to be very difficult. I, mean, I think it's been great so far that Joe Biden is going to try to welcome the voices of everybody in this country. It's very difficult. There will always be people who think my voice is more important than your voice and why aren't they listening to me and my group got you elected and right. the other group didn't do as much. That's normal. Um, I'm looking forward to a president who actually does try to listen to as many different voices as he can. Let's go from uh, from where you just mentioned. The, the, the two Senate races obviously are in the state of Georgia, but even with Biden in the White House, the U.S. House where you served right. will now have fewer Democrats, still a Democratic majority, but fewer Democrats. Yep. And Republicans may control the Senate again, but that, but that still is is in question this morning. So will the stalemate continue? Is the Republican Party forever changed by Donald Trump? What do you think? I, again, I, I for me personally, I think there's going to be a lot of very interesting questions and answers over the next or well, six months and then maybe a year or so. And one of those is just what you just asked. Uh, and I think both parties are going through difficulties internally. I mean, Democrats obviously have their internal their internal fights with the left and the more moderate, and the Republicans have the same thing with the right and the more moderate. Um, so for the sake of discussion, I don't know the answer to this. Donald Trump clearly embraced, and it seemed to me that he embraced and fully he did it full-throatedly, the extreme right. Um, now, what if the Republicans were to wake up tomorrow and nominate somebody who's a little bit more moderate? Uh, you can name a dozen people people who might fill that capacity. I don't know the answer to that. And, and same thing with Democrats. We clearly nominated a more moderate candidate of the ones we had this time. Um, are they going to be able to survive? Is the left going to uh, turn around, turn on them? I, 
none of those things can be answered for a while. I actually think it's going to be a very interesting fight within both parties for the next year or so to see which group dominates. And honestly, if the Republicans decide to continue with their extreme right agenda, um, they're going to continue to lose. Um, if Democrats move too far to the left, they're going to lose. Uh, so I actually think that um, I'm hoping that Joe Biden governs as president the way he governed, uh, or he served as a senator, which was moderately liberal. Now, again, I'm probably more liberal than he is, and I would be one of those people pushing for a more liberal agenda. At the same time, it's more important to be in the majority and to have, have the White House than it is to get everything I want. Because if you have Donald Trump in the White House, you get nothing. And I would rather take small steps to advance than no steps at all and simply feel good about me being right. Let's uh, focus the conversation on Massachusetts, sort of narrow it down a little bit. Uh, you served with many of the people that are now in the congressional delegation, um, but with a slimmer majority of Democrats, um, a slimmer number of Democrats in the House. Will this mean that some members of the Massachusetts delegation might get a bump up to bigger roles, like chairmanships of key committees, for example? It's possible. Um, we, we have two very powerful positions in Richie Neal and, and Jim McGovern, uh, and we have several other members in great positions. Uh, Steve Lynch is in a fantastic position on several different committees. Uh, Bill Keating is in a great position. Catherine Clark is in leadership. You know, Massachusetts is, is well positioned to take advantage of this. Um, will they step up? Uh, it depends. I mean, it depends what's open and what's not open. But no matter what happens, no matter what their official titles might be come January 20th, um, I will tell you that Massachusetts is in a great position to actually have an influence on the direction of this country. There's been chatter of possibly Catherine Clark re, um, sort of stepping up to become the speaker if and when Nancy Pelosi decides to retire. Could you see that happening? Sure. I mean, it's possible. Uh, Catherine is, is trying right now to, uh, to win one of the seats internally. Uh, and if she wins it, she'll be in a great position. She's well respected in the House. Um, I, you know, again, I actually think she's going to win this particular seat. But even then, this is a relatively new seat and there's no, nece there's no necessarily definitive path to leadership. How long is Nancy Pelosi going to stay? Was Steady Hoyer going to stay? Uh, people seem to think that Jim Clyburn might leave, but he may change his mind now that Joe Biden's in the White House. <laughs> so all that being said, uh, a lot of this is, uh, is people wanting to move up, but also being able to. Uh, the Democratic Party is well known for uh, respecting, for the most part, uh, not seniority, but at least, um, at least moving through the chairs. It does change uh, on occasion. We have an internal revolution once in a while, but not very often. Um, and stability right now, I think the whole country kind of wants some degree of stability. I think that's what one of the things this election was all about. We're tired of the chaos. You, and you know, I, I, I hope that the House is, is the same way. You, you, you mentioned Jim Clyburn, and, and perhaps uh, one move more than any was the one move he made to, to save Joe Biden and turn it around. In, the, the, in the primaries. Absolutely. In the primary, yeah, yeah months ago. Jimmy is, is well respected, and remember, in, in the primary, South Carolina doesn't have a whole lot of Democratic primary votes, right. um, so that his voice was even more amplified. Jim Clyburn, is a, he's a great guy. He's one of my, he's one of my better friends in Congress. Um, he, he has his finger on the pulse, not only of his district, but of South Carolina, the South, and the whole country to a great extent. Um, and he's a pretty smart politician. So the fact that he embraced Joe Biden helped Joe a lot. Um, and I'm glad he listened to him. And uh, you know, Jimmy, I just think Jimmy's one of the the best guys I served you, with. You, you mentioned this a, a couple of minutes ago, but Joe Biden has spent most of his career in the party's middle lane. But uh, but I want to ask you this, with, with Senator Elizabeth Warren, with Senator Bernie Sanders, and the squad, which includes Ayanna Pressley, all with higher public profiles, how far to the left, do you, do you think that Biden will be pushed to the left? I, I, it's, I don't know. I, and it depends where you sit. <laughs> it depends what you think the, the, the far left is or the far right. And everybody, and that definition changes every term and different people see it differently. Um, a lot of people think every Democrat is a crazy lefty, you know, trying to be progressive. Uh, I don't know. I think that he, he won't be all that successful. I mean, I know that the squad gets a lot of media attention, uh, but the truth is the Democratic Party as a whole, nationally, um, is still a moderately progressive party. I mean, we, we did health care. We couldn't get it done to get health care for all, no matter how you define the term, because it wasn't enough Democratic votes. Um, and how far they will go? Don't know. My hope is that, that uh, some of our more progressive members, again, I was one of them, um, understand that you push as far as you can, but at some point you have to say yes. At some point you have to say, yes, we're going to cover 20 million people in health care. At some point you have to say, yes, we're going to clean the environment. Maybe I won't get everything I want. I didn't get everything I want in health care, but I'm really proud I voted for it. And the same thing with the environment. I, I may not get everything I want, but 
progress is progress, and that's how most progress is made. So I really hope that Democrats don't do what Republicans did to themselves and let the perfect be the enemy of the good.